Hi everyone, I'm here with a friend David Gozard. Um, he's just submitted his PhD in physics, so I'm going to talk to him about what it's like to maybe finish a PhD or what it's like to do a PhD. So David, what's your area of interest? So I technically work in a field called optical metrology, which means I use light to measure stuff. So that's the general field, but what I actually work on is signal stabilization. So a lot of things in science and industry and engineering require very high precision frequency reference signals sent out. And we use an atomic clock to do that. So an atomic clock basically provides a very high frequency, high precision tick, and we send that out and we use that to synthesize other signals or make measurements of time or frequency, uh, distance, things like that. If we're doing this over a long distance, then the transmission lines, so generally fiber optic cables, they stretch and shrink a bit due to mm. vibrations or temperature changes. And so that means the hyper-precise tick going in one end is taking a little bit longer, a little bit shorter time to get there. And so it's not coming out a hyper-precise tick at the other okay. end. Yeah. So I work on stabilizing that. So mostly I've worked on the square kilometer array telescope. So in right. the square kilometer array, we're going to have thousands of radio antennas spread over thousands of kilometers of Australia and South African outback. And each of the antennas needs an atomic clock signal sent to them to synchronize the whole array. And so we need these stabilization systems out to each of the antennas because of the sheer distances involved. Right, well that's fascinating that it's an inherently physics project, but it's got applications in astronomy and seems like quite far-reaching applications. Yeah, yeah. so astronomy is what we're doing with it first. So this field of signal stabilization probably goes back about 10 years. Hmm. And over the past 10 years, we've got to the point where we're now using these in big science experiments like the SKA, and uh, there'll be more science experiments, things like comparison of atomic clocks across continents coming in the next couple of years and within the next 10 years we'll probably move on to more industrial applications so you might be seeing this sort of thing come into GPS type right. applications. Hmm. Oh that's cool, like do you think you were driven to pick this project by an interest in astronomy? You like those applications? I was interested in all of physics, I didn't know what I wanted to do as a PhD topic because when I finished my undergrad I looked at the topics on offer at my mm. university and other universities and I, just, I didn't know which one I wanted to do. They all sounded sort of cool to the same extent. Yeah. So what I actually did was I picked it based on my supervisor. I oh, knew, that's a good idea. Yeah, I knew from my honours that having a good supervisor was very important. I'd heard from others having a good supervisor was important. I'd done a summer project with my supervisor. He was seemed really good. Mm. He is really good. Yeah. <laughs> and so I thought I'll stick with him. That, that's a good idea. I, I had a similar thing. I, the project I'm working on now for my PhD, I'd done, done a summer project, I'd done honours, so I knew that I liked the group and the research. I think that's just as important, if not more important, than the research itself. For me, I think I've found that group is yeah, more important. I, I, I'm interested in all yeah. the physics. I'll be happy whatever physics research I'm doing. So I, it's the group mm. that makes it for me. Cool. So did you do your bachelor's in physics? Is that where you came from? I did it in mechanical engineering and physics. Oh, okay. I don't know what the system <laughs> here is, but uh, when I did it, you could do a mechanical engineering and physics double degree. Right. Uh, they, they stopped doing that while I was going through that degree at the University of Western Australia. Um, I originally thought I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. I like playing with Lego mm -hmm. and I like cars and planes and stuff and rockets. So I thought I want, I want to be a mechanical engineer. I want to work for SpaceX and build rockets. Yes. <laughs> and I did physics out of interest and thinking it would also make me more employable if I had those mm -hmm. extra skills. And over time I thought I'm enjoying the physics a lot more than the engineering, especially when I did things like my engineering internship that I had mm -hmm. to do to graduate. Physics is a lot more fun. I, I like yeah. research. I want to stay in research and I think I want to do a PhD in physics. Mm. It sounds like your engineering skills are useful though. You, you're building things and yeah. Certainly. <laughs> I've had to design uh, all sorts of things to actually package these things, take them overseas. So yeah, engineering skills certainly come in. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer ring would have been more helpful and uh, but oh well. All right. Yeah. You live in <laughs>
So I think it's it's very exciting that you've submitted your thesis. Is that right? Just yeah, recently. Yeah. So uh, end of August. Ah, oh, <laughs> just fresh. Yeah. So what what did that feel like? Mixed feelings. <laughs> uh, it was. It was odd. I, I got it in a day earlier than I predicted. So I had from about the start of the year, the end of August as my goal. Uh, it was a, a semi-arbitrary goal I'd set myself. That was just when one of my milestones was coming up mm. in my PhD. So it was a, a semi-arbitrary goal to aim for. And I did run over it by about a week and a half. So my new goal was to, right, just submit it on Friday. And it, on the Thursday, I'd gone through the final version of my thesis a lot uh, and the final edits a lot faster than I thought all my su the edits from my two supervisors I've got friends and family to read over it to find missing commas and things I've gone through all of that and it got to lunchtime and, oh I've, I'm, I'm finished I've wow. checked it through thoroughly it's just enough to I'll go and get it printed and okay it's printed I'll get it signed and then I'll get it signed by the other people who need to sign it I've got half an hour before the graduate research school closes. I'll go and hand this in. <laughs> so it, I'd been building, building up to it. And so it was exciting. My heart was sort of thumping as I walked over there. And I was really, really excited. But on the other hand, it's sort of, once you've handed it in and you turn around, you think, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel. I'm excited to have done this. I, it's a uh, weight off my mind. But... I'm still working on this stuff. I'm right. still going to come in tomorrow and teach a class mm. and work on these experiments and come in next week. I'll try and take a bit of time off now that I've handed <laughs> this thing in. But yeah. That's why I'm here. I'm still working on this stuff. Well, congratulations on, on finishing it. That's a huge achievement. Okay. Uh, do you feel like from the other side of a PhD, you've, you've kind of just submitted, I've only just started. Um, were there a lot of challenges getting to that point? Um, I suppose I'd learnt a lot in my honours that a lot of the research skills that were needed, the, the time management skills, the research skills, how to research, where to find mm. resources, I'd learnt a lot of those in my honours. So I didn't have that learning curve so much in my PhD. I knew where to find papers. I knew who in the building I could go and ask, mm. oh, I've got this problem with quantum mechanics or with wave mechanics who's the expert in the building on that, I'll go talk to them, and I had no problems with doing that. Mm. It was just the technical stuff. I'm in a new field, how do I yeah. learn this stuff? And I had supervisors to learn from, but I could go and read the papers mm. and learn how to do this. I got to go on an exchange to various places. I got sent to the National Physical Laboratory in the UK for two months, so I got to learn from other researchers. So there wasn't a stressful learning curve, but mm. there was an all steep learning curve you have in any PhD. And Different PhD students uh, treat their PhD differently and also it depends on what you can do in what field. Like a lot of PhD students, they are in the lab a lot uh, over the weekends. They're in every weekend, that sort of thing. Yeah. I tried to treat mine like a nine to five job. I had mm. to do the occasional late night and weekend, but mostly right, nine to five, I'm working on my PhD. I'm not watching YouTube videos. I'm not going to procrastinate. Yeah. This is treat it like a job. And that worked well for me. And I know in some things you can't do that. Like mm. if you, I don't know much about other fields. I know there are some fields where if you're watching a vacuum chamber pump down or certain uh, quantum mechanics experiments come to temperature, you need to be there overnight to yeah. watch it down. You can't help things like that. Mm. But in which case you need to still plan that, take time off. And yeah. I, I like that advice of, of treating it like a nine to five job. I know like there's sort of a culture within PhD students of you should be here all the time, your, your PhD takes over your life. And I feel like some people almost work themselves to the ground in that mindset. Like it is hard and I know it's going to be hard, but I think managing that time. You, you definitely yeah. need the time off. And even the PhD students who are there late into the night, every night, and there on the weekends. Mm. When I wandered in in the morning, like, they'd spend an hour watching YouTube videos yeah. in the morning or on the weekend they might even play games at their desk, but they've been in the lab at the university and so they haven't had the mental shutdown that you need to relax. Mm. Personally, I don't. certainly that wouldn't work for me. I need to go home and work on my hobbies mm. or sit and read a book and stop thinking about physics for a bit. Yeah. All right. So. 
what are you doing now? Are you are you looking for a postdoc? Are you moving into postdoc work? Or? I'm moving into postdoc work, so I'm mm -hmm. continuing what I did for my PhD. Apart from the SKA, I'm also working on some free space transmissions. So that means shooting the lasers through the air, and so now the air is the thing pertur perturbing the laser signal, and so we've got to stabilise that. So that's right. why I'm at ANU today. Uh, I've got some collaborators here, so I'm talking with them, working to integrate our two systems. So they're working on the steering system that'll point it through the shimmering atmosphere while I work on then stabilizing okay. that laser signal. So that's what I'm working on <clears throat> right now. That'll take me to the end of the year. I will um, hopefully sign a postdoc yeah. contract <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, You'd like to stay in the academic pathway? I like research. Yeah. I, I like research a lot. I also like the teaching. I've got mm, to do yeah. just partly by accident I've got to do quite a bit of teaching and lecturing over the past few years and I really enjoy that as well. It's nice to have a, a teaching break, you, it gets you out of the lab for an hour and then after that you're exhausted because you've been teaching yeah. and you think, oh god I can get back to the lab yeah. and it, it's, it's still work but it's a nice, it's a nice mental break, it gets mm. me out of the lab and I enjoy that whole research and teaching, that whole learning process mm. from start to finish and so that's where I want to stay and academia is where that's at. All right so well David also does YouTube or is just getting into it to, to teach some people through that medium as well um, so your channel just David G if people want to find you? For now I will <laughs> yes David G for now I might change that as I develop it. Yeah, well, I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the description so you can find David on the web um, and learn from what he has to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. This has been fun. Thanks for having me. Thanks.